big interest for research in that of cryogenics is that as you cool down, the physics changes. First time you see phenomena, you see them in lower temperatures. In order for science to advance, people doing this research have to use products that can give them reliable measurements, give them reliable material characterization specs, and we enable that to happen. One of the really cool things about working at Lakeshore is we get to work with some of the smartest people in the world. Everything from new forms of energy development to big physics research projects. We've always pushed the envelope and tried to find something better to replace whatever we had before. One of the phrases is, right, I can see so far because I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. 30, 40 years ago, there was no market. John and Lakeshore helped create a way to do development in low temperature physics and space exploration. John was making sensors partly on his kitchen table with rather primitive equipment. I mean, really primitive equipment. To make gold wire bonds, he had a little fixture and he pushed down on the gold. Reputedly, John and Helen only had a half basement and John jacked up one end of the house and dug a full basement. Then he hired Victor. He started to build the first sensor and then he teach me how to do it. A lot of those parts had to be built under high temperature. So he fixed a hot plate for me to work on. We were young enough that we didn't necessarily know, know too much of what was going on. Maybe the finances were really tight at our place because my dad needed to make payroll and I think my mom was a partner in a lot of that stress along the way. They were talking about money problems and Michael said, well dad, I know what you should be. You should change your job. You should be a millionaire. I started immediately in starvation wages right after I graduated and the first project was the fast neutron dosimeter. At that time, the Soviet Union and the United States were at loggerheads and everybody was afraid a nuclear war would break out and they would use small weapons on the battlefield. The military wanted to know if you were a soldier how long you were going to be able to continue fighting after you had been exposed to radiation and it was developed for that reason. It was extremely difficult to build. All the semiconductor companies that they tried to have built it could not. The only one who knew how to build it was Phil. Dave and John negotiated a very clever deal where we got a royalty for every dosimeter. John would get a check for four or five hundred thousand dollars every quarter and I, th I think his eyes glazed over a little bit and he said, this will come in handy. <laughs> When I started in 81, we were in the old Kroger store. Back then, you know, there was about 20 people. I did everything. I did sales trips, I wrote manuals, I did R&D, I was involved in production. I remember John being back on the production floor, laying out circuit diagrams. The summer when I was probably 16 or 17, and Michael and I had to get up at the crack of dawn and work long hours to solder the circuit boards. In 1986, two scientists, Alex Muir and George Bednors, discovered high temperature superconductivity. They actually got the Nobel Prize in Physics. Scientists all over the world literally stopped whatever they were working on to conduct experiments at cryogenic temperatures. John Swartz gave us one year to develop Lakeshore's first systems product. It wasn't a small sensor, and it was a whole big package. It had software. It was a new technology for us, a whole new stage for Lakeshore. John's always been willing and able to take advantage of an opportunity when it came along and see something where others didn't. At times, you could tell he was quite gratified that things worked out, partially due to luck and partially due to the luck that the perseverance produced. 
Today, we have over 165 employees. We're about a $35 million a year company. The Swartz family reinvest in R&D in this company at a rate that's about two times higher than the national average. We've actually won the Columbus CEO Top Workplace Award for several years in a row now. Our average tenure is about 10 years. And keeping the business family run allows Karen and Michael and Susan and John to make decisions that a family member would make as opposed to a board. For those of you who don't know, we had a board meeting today. It's time to delegate to the next generation. John got to a point where he needed to pass this company to his kids. I think John intentionally did what he did when he did because he still wanted to be around to help mentor and help guide. He could see whether they screwed it up or did it right. I was going to make a toast, but everybody needs their cider <laughs> to my family. I have known of businesses where the second generation has killed the company, but Michael and Karen and Susan are working hard to really set up Lakeshore to be a much bigger company. The next 50 years, yeah, that's a long time uh, to, to look, look forward. I think, you know, what we're, what we're focused on now is helping researchers characterize new materials, more execution focused as opposed to sort of entrepreneurial focused. I think as we grew, we realized we need other managers and you need some sort of hierarchy, change the culture to be more inclusive and more creative. To me, the 50 years of success is accomplishment and everybody contribute to the effort. I still come in here, I still get involved in some things, mainly as a cheerleader in a sense. The legacy is if it can continue on, that's gonna depend on other people. I think with some of the products we have coming out, we're going to see some very significant growth in the next few years.